Hello, can everyone hear me? Welcome to day three of From Crisis to Cash Flow. I'm just going to give everybody a couple minutes. I want to do this every day just in case people need to grab their coffee or their wine or their beer. I know it's one o'clock somewhere. Grab some water, your worksheets, those are in the um, files tab of Leadership Revolution. How many of you are new today? I know we had a lot of new members join. Give me some hearts, give me some love. Let me know you're ready. Just a couple minutes. I want to make sure everybody's here. Okay, so welcome to day three. Um, for those of you who this is your first day with us, my name is Rebecca Goldman and I am the owner of Taking the Wheel Consulting. I've been in the business for 20 years next month. Um, and just to give you guys a little recap of what we've been doing over the last couple days, um, the first day we talked about how you can really be connecting with your community to, to garner business. Um, and then yesterday we we talked about um, how you can be working your numbers and your relationships with your vendors, getting really intimate with your business. Um, you know, especially right now when business is, you know, it's, it's slower. Um, getting really comfortable, getting really familiar with your business. And, and I keep using the word intimate, but that that is what I, I, I that's the best word I can come up with. You know, this is your baby. This is your everything. So just getting really uh, in tune with with who you are as, as a business and, and who you need to serve and, and what you need to serve. OK, that's going to be key. Today, we are going to be talking about the profitable execution of your re your reworked business. So, you know, over the last couple of days, we talked about, you know, how you can be connecting with your community, you know, getting out there uh, on your social media and asking, asking everybody, what is it that, that you need right now? What can we do for you as a business? How can we uh, help? Toilet paper? I think everybody's lacking that. Dry goods? We would love to be able to help you with that. Connecting with them so that you're ready to be the one-stop shop that this world needs right now. Now, I'm going to say it every single day. You guys have an opportunity bigger than you will ever have an opportunity again. Right now, people need your services. What was once a luxury for people going out to eat, experiencing um, dining outside of their home, it is now a necessity. People need food delivered to their doorsteps. Um, I mentioned it yesterday, you know, uh, where my dad's from in Michigan. They're getting, you know, they're talking about possibly closing the doors on grocery stores and only allowing delivery. What does that mean? Grocery stores are backed up for days. So this is the opportunity for you to become that hero that your community needs. And that's exactly what you are right now. You're a hero to them. OK, so we're going to dive right in because I have a lot of things that I want. I want to cover. Um, you know, somebody had just been, uh, typed in Oscar. I hope you're watching right now. He was really um, concerned on, on ways that he could help his customers in the moment of crisis and how to help his employees that are financially hurting. He said, I want to be most prepared for when this is over and I'll work triple if needed. And I love that. I love that you're so willing to dive in. Um, but the one thing I do want to say with this, and this is why I'm, I, I, I'm, talking directly to you right now um, because I thought it could be a good a good example for a lot of people. Um, 
I don't I don't know that there's gonna be a normal and I don't know that this is just gonna blow over so why I created this workshop why my team and I got together is because in case normal doesn't ever exist again the way we knew it we want to be thinking outside of the box now we want to be building the foundation of our business we want to be able to pivot and move according to what um, what our, our community needs so I really, if in anybody else who's new, um, go back and watch the, the, the first two days if, if you haven't had an opportunity before. Um, I really tried to lay this out so that it is in, in somewhat of a chronological order. Obviously, everybody's situation is a little bit differently or different on where you're at right now. Um, but I did, I did try to do that so that you knew which steps you would need to kind of take first. Um, and I, you know, I'm just going to say this right now, guys, if I'm not answering any of your questions, you guys have specific questions for me. Uh, maybe this, you know, this is so personal and, the, and there's things that you just don't want to type up in, in leadership revolution. Email me. Private message me. Okay. I am doing free consultations right now on top of it. Okay, we are here to support one another. We're here to um, offer advice and solutions. I promise you that there's somebody in this group, even if we don't know all of the answers, there's somebody here that does. I mean, that is my motto behind my business. I might not know everything, but I hire experts who do know everything. I make sure that, that I, I'm constantly surrounding myself by, by people who can answer that question or who can offer that solution, okay? And that's what this community means to me. Okay, so diving right in, the profitable execution of your business. Now, I think, you know, first things first, we're gonna go back to, to some safety measures that I, I really wanna kind of address. Um, for a lot of us, we have not seen the worst of what this, um, what what you know, COVID is, is going to do to our communities. Um, some of us are, going, are are on track to peak in a couple weeks from now. Some are at the end of the month or the beginning of May. So I think for a lot of us, we have to just kind of prepare for the fact that we we there's the worst could still yet to come. Does that make sense to everyone? So, so being safe has to be our number one priority, always first and foremost. And, and even before this happened, right? I mean, I was like the safety Nazi. I don't even know if I should say that word, but the safety person, right? In, in, in all of my kitchens, don't touch that. Do not touch that. Change your gloves, wash your hands. Do not touch that. Is that on ice? What temperature is that? Did you did you did you take the temperature? Did you test your sanitizer today? I mean, that was who who I was. Now I've taken it to a whole new level. OK, so some things that I think you guys can be doing, um, you know, a lot of you guys are asking the question, how do I how do I keep my employees safe? You know, for those of you who are still open for business and you're doing um, takeout and um, delivery curbside pickup. How do I keep my employees safe? You know, just because you're not a doctor or nurse doesn't mean that you're not just as much, you know, on the front line, right? So how can we do this? Well, I think first things first, you know, the social distancing, it's there for a reason. So if you can kind of create schedules for your employees so that they're, they're coming in at different times so that there's just not so many people always together, I think that's going to be really, really helpful. Um, now that you have, you know, extra space, maybe you're a restaurant that has a whole dining room that, that, that that's not full right now. Could you turn that into a prep area? You know, I, I know in catering, oftentimes we would have to set up six foot tables, Lexons with ice, bus tubs inside of them. It would be, you know, on the other side of the entire kitchen. We had to create prep areas when we were slammed. So thinking like that, what space can I use so that all of my employees are not together at the same time? You know, maybe you have a certain crew who, who comes in and does a deep clean at, at one time. And then you have your prep crew come in who, who's preparing your, your, um, your to-go items. 
your, your cold foods, your hot foods. Then maybe you have somebody else who, who can come in later and package all of them. And then maybe your delivery driver comes in after that. Now, I know it's that that doesn't sound like that is something you can be doing if you're a restaurant who's just taking one order at a time, one order at a time. We're going to get to where I think you need to be here in just a couple minutes so that it's not just one order at a time. It's multiple orders because that's the goal here. OK, taking temperatures. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. And, and reminding your employees that if you're not feeling 100 percent, stay home. If you're not feeling 100 percent, please just stay home. You are the business owner. You are the manager. You are the leader of this business. You need to stress that to everyone. Guys, in order for us to stay open, everyone needs to be safe. OK. And make sure you're taking care of your employees, you know, make sure that it's if they if they call in sick, it's not going to mean the difference between them feeding their families, because that's that's usually what it comes down to. You know, we have all been in this industry for years and years and years. Right. I remember so many times working through sickness, working through anything. Right. Because I had to work. Now is not that time. Now is not the time to push through how we, you know, or push it to the side like, yeah, I'm not really feeling too great, but I think I'm going to be OK. And that's not the time. OK, we're not playing games. This is serious. OK, and stressing that to your employees is going to be number one. OK, something you can be doing, too. You know, we used to have a night drop for a lot. We were we were on a night drop program for, for a lot of our vendors, and that was super helpful. They would come in. They would drop off all of our food and our walk ins. It was safe. Nobody else was there. We liked it because we were so busy all the time that it was just easier to come in and put everything away and not have to worry about them coming in in the middle of, you know, 100 employees running around the the, the kitchen and things like that. Stay out of the way. Stay out of the way. You know, we didn't we didn't want to have to deal with that. And if you have negotiated with your vendors, you've sat down with them, they understand your expectations. They're going to do a good job with that. I promise you. My biggest concern when I switched to uh, a, a night drop was, you know, what if something comes in and it's not up to par? What if something comes in and, and, and it's not something I would I would uh, have accepted. I didn't have to worry about that because they knew my expectations. They knew what what I wanted to see coming through my doorstep. So they, they never they never dropped anything off that I wouldn't accept. OK, so that's why we talked about yesterday negotiating, um, having that relationship with your vendors, letting them know your expectations because it all comes full circle. Right. Um, I know somebody else uh, had said something to me the other day and said, it, it, I can't keep up with packaging to go orders. It's just I'm faster if I plate the meals. And I'm going to say this. I think where my catering background, a lot of my a lot of my background is in catering. Um, I spent 11 years doing it. Creating assembly lines is, is probably the easiest way to be doing that. And, and you can do that safely, just so you know. OK, you can set out 10 boxes. You can have all your product on ice. You can have wire shafers um, keeping your hot foods hot. There, there are ways to do this. Um, and, and if you want more information on that, I'd be happy to walk you through it. Um, just let me know. OK. Um, but, you know, something else when you're when your delivery drivers come in, you know, creating creating a, a kind of grab and go station for them so that they don't have to walk all the way into wherever everybody else is prepping or where your, uh, you know, your your normal front of house would be having it all ready for them so that when they walk into the door, all they do have to do is grab it and walk back out. OK, I would set up at least three hand station hand wash stations along the way. OK, one of the things I did, I created a while ago. I'm not sure if anybody you had an opportunity to check it out, but it was a COVID-19 resource guide. And in there, I put a picture of a gravity flow hand wash that we would take, you know, to our catering events. We did off premise catering, which meant we had to build a kitchen from scratch wherever we were in the middle of the desert or 
in somebody's backyard. So we had these five gallon beverage cambros that we would fill with scalding hot water. We had a bucket to catch everything. It just has to be five gallons as well. It has to be able to, to hold everything that could come out of that five gallon beverage cambro. So setting up a couple of those, having one right before your delivery driver could enter your facility, having another one right there in case you don't have a hand wash acceptable. They open the door, there's one right there. They just touch the door handles, right? Talking about all of the surfaces that they could possibly touch. And I'm not just referring to your delivery drivers. This goes to everybody. It's just one of the things that's coming to my mind. Okay. Now, communicating with your customers about being safe. I think, you know, I think right now people, um, that's what they want to hear from you. Even if it's kind of a weird discussion to have, I think that how you're going to connect with your community, the, the fastest and the easiest way is if they know that you're practicing safety first. I've talked to so many people over the last couple of weeks. And the one thing that I keep hearing over and over and over again from people who are not in this industry is how do I know if I can trust them to deliver the food to my doorstep? How do I know they're being safe? So communicating that to them is so valuable. It's just one more layer of really connecting with what it is that they're going through. And one of the biggest things besides needing food, being scared of how they're going to get food, is fear. So addressing that with them is going to be so, so, so key right from the get go. Hi, so and so, you know, thank you for your business. We really appreciate you ordering from us. Just so you know, we will be accepting credit cards over the phone only. And to let you know, when, when my driver pulls up in front, he's going to give you a call or she's going to give you a call and let you know that they're there to drop off the food. We ask that you don't answer the door. You let them drop off the food. And once they leave, you can go outside to make sure that they're not just putting the food on the floor. Why don't you put a chair outside right now or, you know, a, a basket or whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable, a good place for them to set your food down. So that's not directly on the floor. We don't, we don't want that, right? And then they're going to go ahead and leave. And if there's any problems, if there's any issues with, with your order, just pick up the phone, call us again, and we will, we will make sure to take care of it. By the way, how are you doing? Is there anything else we can help you with? Okay. Having some sort of like script might be helpful right now so that everybody's on the same page and they're making sure that they're saying the same things to your customer. You know, being convenient also means that you have to stay consistent in your verbiage, okay? So those are just a couple things I wanted to go over right, you know, right from the get-go, okay? Now, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. I think I got it all. Okay, another thing, I actually didn't get it all. When I was in um, catering, one of the things that our health inspectors loved the most, I mean, I never had a health inspector come through the door without being like, my gosh, I love what you're doing here. You guys are doing such an amazing job. That made me feel awesome. You know, never was I in a situation where I was like, oh, the health inspector's here. Scramble, 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 run. It was just the health inspector's here. Keep doing what you're doing. That felt great. But that started with me holding every single person accountable for their for their actions and their decisions, informing them when they made bad decisions, letting them know what they did wrong and how they can correct it and stopping them from doing it again. I, I took it seriously because I realized how important safety was. Now, one of the things that we did that I thought this might be a really great um, opportunity for you guys to introduce in your in your kitchens in your establishments is we had a three bucket system so in your three compartment sink you have a wash rinse and a sanitize we had the same system for all of our surfaces so instead of just taking our sanitizer and wiping down the table I had a wash bucket that had soap hot soapy water a squeegee 
and a sponge, the green sponge. I had a white bucket that was just filled with water and your normal towels that you would have in your kitchen. And then I had my red bucket that had my sanitizer, my tested sanitizer in there with a sanitation rag. Okay, we ordered specific rags from our disposable company because what was what was special about them is that they um, like your normal towels that you have in, in your kitchen, they leave um, residue so it can dilute your sanitizer. These didn't do that. And I can find the name for you and let you know. I don't I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. Um, Kelly, maybe you remember what that is. Um, but anyway, we would do that with every surface every single time. So we would wash, we would rinse, we would sanitize, we would air dry. And I remember the health inspector coming in and being like, I don't know anybody else who does this. And that's something I wanted to share with you guys. It, it, it is so useful in, in keeping people, holding people accountable because they just get into a, a better mindset of making sure that they're taking um, safety to the next level. We're washing, right? So my sanitizer bucket isn't full of food and crusty towels and things like that. I can tell you how many kitchens I walked into and the first thing I would do is look at that sandy bucket and be like, oh my gosh. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you. I thought that could be helpful for you guys. Okay, the biggest thing though is again, holding people accountable, okay? Letting them know there's a new sheriff in town, right? Maybe this, this was something we did before, it's not what we're doing now, okay? Becoming the leader your team needs so that you can support your community in the way that you need to be supporting them right now. This is your business, this is your baby, okay? Now that I'm done yelling at you, I'm not yelling at you, I promise. Okay, so over the last couple of days, we talked about really kind of getting familiar with our brand, and what does it stand for, right? Has anybody had an opportunity to kind of really dive in deep, get familiar with that? Ask yourself, what do you want people to feel when they experience your products and services? How do you want to be portrayed to them? What do you want them to say about you? I was going to show you guys something because I thought this was kind of cool. You know, talking about your... Um, your branding, your 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 logo, how, how people are going to remember you. Um, and then, you know, I went into a couple days ago just making sure that you're looking really, really professional, okay? So this, it's all bent up. I hope you guys can see it. Can everybody see it or is it, is it hard to see or no? It looks hard on my end. Okay, this was my old business card when I first started my catering company before my, my catering company, my consulting company, before I did anything, before I, you know, was even ready to, you know, start taking on clients, any of that, you know, I designed my logo. I started building my website, which eventually I completely changed over. That was my logo I created. This is my new one. I also have this one. It's not focusing on it. It's not focusing. Oh, man. All right. Well, Move it closer. Okay, let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay, so my old one. My new one. My other one. Okay. Do we see the difference? I knew that I wanted people to associate me with um, being a professional. I knew that I was a professional and how I was representing myself before was not coming through in that way. It looked cheap. It was cheap. I eventually invested in an amazing web designer and I hired a marketing team who could really help get the name out for me, who could really help me make sure that my brand was, was being portrayed to everybody the way, the way I needed it to be. So if you haven't taken an opportunity to get really familiar with what your brand is, 
decide how you want people to experience you, I really, you really need to start doing that because it's going to be really hard to explain that to your community if you don't know. It's going to be really hard to hold your employees accountable if you don't know. My marketing team understands me like the back of their hand. They're, they're so intimate in my business, it's, it's, it's insane. They speak better for me sometimes. Sometimes I can't get it out. They do a better job than me because they know me inside and out, but because I was able to explain it to them. I was able to show them my heart and soul, and this is how much this means to me. That's how they're able to do it. So for those of you out there who are, you know, questioning, you know, who, who am I right now? What does my business stand for? You know, how, how, how do I want people to experience what we serve? Get intimate with it. Feel it. Know it like the back of your hand and then partner with experts who can, who can make your vision a reality. Okay. Now, over the last you know couple of days, we really talked about um, you know all the different ways that we can be serving our communities, and I kept going back to you really need to be the one stop shop. You have to be the one stop shop, right? This is the opportunity for all of you. Okay, one of the biggest ways that I think is is going to make the biggest impact is if you're offering some sort of subscription service. Okay. Now, why I like that so much is because it's reoccurring orders, right? It's like catering. Yes, you can be offering them, you know, toilet paper and paper towels and, and, and yogurt and, and granola cups and, you know, build your own pizza kits. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on of what it is that you could you could go through your entire facility right now and, and pull everything off the shelf and i promise you it's something somebody needs you can sell but are you only selling at one time maybe twice the goal is to get people to want to order from you all the time right you want to be that one-stop shop What I like about, you know, the, the subscription style service, right, is that, well, there's a couple different things. A, this is going to be huge for your bottom line. If you can get people to, to order from you multiple times a week, hey, so-and-so, just to let you know, we're doing a subscription service, okay? We're going to drop everything you need off at your doorstep. So it'll be five meals this week. It'll be include um you know, three desserts and a couple lunches or whatever it is that you decide. We're going to do family meals for everybody. How many people do you have in your family? Five, two adults, three kids. Okay, got it. We're going to drop it off at your doorstep for you. And then if there's anything else we can do too. Oh, you have a birthday coming up? Yes, we would love to do that birthday cake for you. Just let us know. We'll make sure we do a great job for you. Oh, you need um, paper plates and cutlery and napkins? We would love to be able to drop that off for you so that you don't have to worry about all those dishes. Okay. What's going to happen with your um, kind of turning into some sort of subscription or getting um, people to order from you often, you're going to know in advance what people want and need as opposed to just guessing. Okay. This is where I was able to run anywhere from a 12 to 18% food cost, depending on what time of the year. I mean, I had, like I said before, I had events where I was running a 9% food cost and it's not because I was sacrificing quality. It's not because I wasn't serving enough food. It's because I knew down to the ounce how much I needed to order and prepare. Okay. Thinking Costco convenience, right? Everybody loves Costco and they love it for a reason. They go in there, they can get everything they want. There's tons of frozen meals that all they have to do is pop in the oven. They can get appetizers because they're having a little um, get together. 
They can get all of their fruits and vegetables there. They can get all of their dry goods there. Then they can send their kids through the line. Everybody can get a hot dog, right? I mean, it's, a, it, it's an experience. I mean, they really thought about that well. It's an experience for everybody. They're the one-stop shop that offers an experience. That's who you need to be. That's how you need to connect with your community. I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. Okay. Okay, about that. Now, how do you become the one-stop shop? Well, marketing. First thing first, we talked about it the other day. I'm going to say it again right now. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Letting everybody know you're available. Connecting with your community. Asking them what they want. Letting them know you're open and available. Okay, then what's the next step? Introducing some sort of salesperson. Doesn't have to be a salesperson, it could be a server. Anybody who has the ability to really connect with people, like thinking back, who was your best server you had? Somebody that could that could literally work any type of table, no matter who it was. It could be, you know, an elderly couple, it could be 15 year old kids, it could be a family, it could be a bachelorette party. That person knew how to serve them, connect with them, and then upsell. Okay, it's more than just asking them what they need. It's telling them what they need because they haven't thought that they could even get that yet. So having somebody that can say to somebody, hey, are you running low on toilet paper at your house? Hey, are you running low on milk? Hey, are you running low on, on um, flour and whatever else dry in your pantry? How about tomato sauce? We'll package you five pounds dry of pasta and we'll send a bunch of tomato sauce that you can stick in your freezer, pull out whenever you're ready. We would love to do that for you. I know you can't find pasta at the store anywhere, right? Better yet, this is what we'll do. We'll offer you a subscription service that, that we have available currently right now. And what it's going to be is we're going to send all of the ingredients separate. Okay, I'm going to have the, the pasta par cooked. I'm going to have your sauce, all of your veggies ready to go, cut your chicken diced up and ready to go. And all you're going to do is throw it into one skillet, heat it up till it, heat, it reaches 165 degrees. And now you have family meal. How does that sound? Does that sound easy? Does that sound convenient? Because that's what people are looking for. Easy, convenient. And then if you can hit them with that experience, right? We talked yesterday about, you know, um, six pack carrier cases of wine, really, really um, offering them some sort of experience, having your mixologist host a live happy hour. Okay, I know, I know restaurants right now are doing like drive-in movie theaters where you park like four lanes away from everybody or four parking spots away. They're putting up a movie, right, on a big screen. You're coming in, you're grabbing your to-go order, you're watching a movie, right? It's an experience. We have to assume that nothing's going to go back to normal, right? Hopefully it does. But let's just assume that the normal we knew is never going to be again, right? So what does our new normal look like? Virtual, everything probably. But people still crave experiences with one another. They still want to be connected to one another. Even people who love being on the computer, do, 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 do. Still, still want to experience things in life, right? Aren't we all going bored at home? So creating something like, you know, virtual cooking classes for, for your community, putting together a recipe book. I mean, I know a lot of us are like, you know, I'm really not, I don't like to share my recipes. I've always shared my recipes because I'm going to say this. 
nobody's going to make it how I make it because I know how to make it, right? It's like a pinch of that, a dash of this. Only I know what that pinch means and what that dash means. Mix, mix until light and fluffy. Well, what does light and fluffy mean? So creating a list of, you know, a recipe book. Offering them all of the ingredients. Here, we can portion it for you. Or we can just send you everything and you can you can have, um, you know, baking time with your kids. Here's here's the recipe for our blueberry muffin. You and your kids can go enjoy making this together now. Here's the recipe for it. We'll, we'll throw in five different recipes. It'll be one dessert, three different entrees, two salads, or maybe it's a breakfast item, whatever it is. How, how to make the perfect omelet. Right? Connecting, connecting, connecting. Now, going back to how do we execute this perfectly, okay? How do we make sure that, that our, our bottom line is, is sitting pretty? Now, the one thing that I always did in catering, like I, like I said, is that I always knew what orders were coming in. I had had those conversations with our sales team who had those conversations with our clients, and, and, and it went like this. We are so excited to be able to, um, you know, host you and, you know, prepare all of the food for your wedding coming up in a couple weeks. We need this much notice in order to make sure that all of our product can come in fresh and looking the best that it can possibly look. Okay, so we need this much time to be able to do that so that we can offer you nothing but the best. We want your day to feel special, right? We want this to be the best day of your life. So we're going to need some notice, right? And so this is what I would do. Every week I got all of my orders for the next week, right? Now things would change. That happens. You know, numbers would go up and down a little bit, but nothing drastic. And I would go through, okay? First order looks like this. It's chicken, veggies, mashed potatoes, dinner rolls, salad. Okay, I'd go down, chicken, six ounces raw per person, veggies, four ounces raw per person, mashed potatoes, five ounces raw per person, bread, 12 dozen, it's 100 people. Okay, salad, two and a half cases of spring mix, they're three pound container, or three pound cases. Okay, cucumbers, three and a half quarts, cherry tomatoes, four quarts, red onion, one and a half quarts, dressing, two and a half quarts, sauce for chicken, two and a half quarts. Done, right? Next order, same thing. Short ribs, chicken, um, asparagus, and kale salad. Going down the list, okay? Two ounces of short ribs, three and a half ounces of chicken. Four ounces of asparagus. Okay, the list goes on and on. Then I would do is I would add it all up, and I would order exactly what I needed. This is why I love catering so much because I was able to maintain that food cost because I always knew down to the ounce what I needed. It was never a guessing game. I didn't have walk-ins full of extra product that was dying. I didn't have lettuce that was going bad because I only ordered what I needed. That is the opportunity I want to share with you guys. Right now, the hardest thing for everybody is that they don't know what people are going to order from. They don't, they don't know who's going to order, when they're going to order, or what they're going to order. Today could be slammed, tomorrow could be nothing. So offering them a deal so that it makes it convenient for them to order in advance. We want to take care of everything for you next week, Mom. I know this has been hard on you. I know that you've become the, the stay-at-home school teacher. You're still doing your full-time job. You're cleaning that house nonstop. You're trying to make sure that your kids aren't touching their faces, right? I know this has been stressful. Let me make it easier. Let us help you. Okay, first let's talk about, you know, what items are you missing in your pantry? What staples are you missing? Okay, and start listing them off for them. Toilet paper, paper towel, blah, 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 right? Because 
people have a tendency of holding back, right? No, I don't need that. No, I don't need that. Yes, they do. How's your, your frozen veggies looking right now? Okay, we can send you IQF frozen veggies too. That way if you don't go through them this week, that's okay. They're there so that you know you always have them. Okay, we want to make dinner for you every single night. We want to make it so that it's so easy for you that you don't even have to think about it. We're going to let you know exactly what you're having on this day, this day, this day, this day, and this day. We're going to write down instructions for you. They're going to be so easy. It's going to be three-step instructions. Dump all ingredients in pan. Uh, heat till 165. Wait a couple minutes. Serve. Right? Or put in oven at 350 for an hour. Toss your salad with the Caesar dressing five minutes before you're getting ready to eat it. Enjoy. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send you enough paper plates, enough cutlery, enough napkins. So you don't even have to do the dishes for people. We know that you're tired of that. You know, we know that you can barely keep up, right? How are you doing on breakfast items right now? I know you're probably starting early, right? You're starting work at eight. Now you got, you know, eight or nine. You have all these kids wondering what, what what's for breakfast, mom? What's for breakfast, mom? How about we send you we send you some some homemade cereal bars? You don't even have to think about it. You can just hand it over to your kid or build your own yogurt station. We'll send you all the ingredients, okay? The berries, the granola, the the the, the vanilla yogurt. That way the kids can build it, build it themselves. It'll keep them busy for a half an hour and out of your hair. How does that sound? I mean, the lists go on and on and on on how you can be the hero your community needs right now. I've said it every single day. I'm going to continue to say it. This is such an opportunity. Okay, now let's think about this even further. If you get this going, and, and you can, I promise, and if you don't know how, call us. We will walk you through it. This is my jam, okay? Portioning, numbers, math, getting it down to a perfect science, that's my jam, okay? I love it. I literally am obsessed with it. Just ask any one of my employees. Call us, okay? But what I like more about this is this. We don't know what the future has in, in you know, has planned for us. We don't. Moving forward, let's assume our, our restaurants open up, people are coming back in to dine in in, in a couple months. It's probably going to have a limit for a while on how many people you can have in at, at one time. Having these kinds of services associated with your establishment is going to keep that money coming in, right? That continuous cash flow, right? That's, that's the name of this game, right? From crisis to cash flow. You're now a catering company. You're now a bakery. You're now a, an establishment that can drop off a, all of your, your beverages, right? We'll, we'll send you home with gallons of iced tea, homemade here, lemonade. We'll send you home with all the, the wine and beer you could ever want or need. And when this all blows over, yes, we would love to host your corporate event. Right here on our private patio, right over here. We would love the opportunity to host you. My husband um, used to work for a company and they had catered lunch every single day. That was one of the biggest perks of him working there. We never had to worry about it. Every single day they had catered lunch and it was good. In catering, I, I, I used to do that for, for companies all the time. That was a client that every single day ordered every day. Monday through Friday, we knew we were serving an extra 120 people. If you start building those relationships now, how great would it be to have that later? Think about that. Even on slow lunches, even if, if, if ever, you know, they, they are still limiting 
people coming into our, our establishments. How great would it have something? How great would it be to have something like that? It's not putting all of your eggs in one basket. It's pivoting, right? We're moving our business according to what is allowed and what is needed. And as it changes, we're going to change too. It's becoming the one-stop shop. It's becoming that place that is involved in every single aspect of every single meal, some way, shape, or form. It's becoming, you know, the place that you can also get apparel from. I mean, think about like, you know, Crackle Barrel, for instance, right? You go in, you have a good little breakfast or lunch, whatever. You can come over, you can buy a rocking chair, and you can buy as many teacups as you could possibly want and rock candy. They have oven mitts for sale. They have cute little aprons for sale, right? You could do that. You could partner with somebody, even if it wasn't just blasting your logo all over, just being able to offer a service, partnering with somebody local in the community who already does stuff like that. We used to do that all the time. On top of, you know, the catering company, there was multiple restaurants involved with the entire company. And, and they would partner with local, you know, little, you know, honey makers or salsa, you know, distributors or, you know, olive oil mills and, and things like that. Homemade marshmallows. There's a question. There's a question for me. I can't see it. Which one is it? Just kind of asked by B. B? Mm -hmm. I have a question for me, apparently. Sorry. It's okay. Okay, B wants to know how, how you can, she's having issues with her produce company right now and, and suggestions on how, how she can have that conversation with her vendors on, listen, we have a business to run at the end of the day. And, and it starts with that, B. It starts with that. It's, it's getting on the phone with them, letting them know that you are searching elsewhere, that you cannot accept this type of quality produce. It's just not okay. This is not what your company stands for. So letting, putting it back in, in their hands. Do you have a plan of action on how to fix this? And if not, should I just switch to a different company? In the meantime, be looking elsewhere. Okay? Message me after this. I'll give you a couple different company names that I think would be really great for you. Uh, I just don't want to be, you know... I'm not I'm not affiliated with anybody. OK, but message me afterwards. I'll give you a couple different places I think could fulfill your guys' needs. But yeah, I mean, it just goes back to having that conversation, letting them know this is not OK. I will not accept this. We have high standards and and we have a business to run. Bottom line. If you can't fulfill the needs, then maybe this relationship just needs to end because that is what it is at the end of the day. This is a relationship, right? It has to work for both parties. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Walk away. Okay. There's plenty of, of businesses right now that want your business. There's plenty of vendors. There's plenty of suppliers that want your business right now. I promise you that. Okay. Who care? Who have heart? Who are in it? Right? Because that's who that's the only types of people we, we partner with, right? I said it yesterday, I'm gonna say it every day until I'm black and blue. I, I partner with two different types of people, experts and people who want to be experts, right? Both have to have one thing in common, heart. Okay, so if they're lacking that right now, then they are. That's that's okay. I hope that answers your question. Okay. All right, so now I got confused but I'm glad that you stopped me on that um, okay so becoming you know that one-stop shop really talking about um, you know knowing in advance what, what you need to prepare this is gonna allow you to a like I said order exactly what you need when you need it it's also going to allow you to break up what you're doing every day OK, I've, I've been in a lot of restaurants and this is one of the first things that I do when I when I when I enter a restaurant or I enter a bakery and I kind of talk to them about their production. You know, 
okay, why are we making this every single day? Now, I, I will not accept and, you know, I won't do anything that will affect quality by any means, but let's just talk about a couple different things, right? If you're going to offer them frozen meals, right? You just feel better about it. You don't have, you don't want to have to worry about, um, you know, the, the fresh, I, this is just frozen stuff. Okay. And then that's even better. That's easier. Okay. On Mondays, you can go through, make all your dressings for the week. Okay. As long as they're vinegar based. Okay. As long as you're paying attention, if they're not to what the expiration date is on the product, let's say you're making a ranch or whatever. Okay. If the buttermilk expires in three days from now, you don't get seven days from today. You get three. Okay. So paying attention to that, but going through and making all of your vinegar dressings. Okay. Going through and making your sauces for the next four days. Okay. Cleaning all of your proteins on one day. Grilling and cooking them, sticking them in the freezer. Okay. If that's the type of, you know, that's the type of product that you're, you're trying to give to people. One stop, you know, one uh, skillet meals. Okay. We got a little frozen chicken here. We have our par cooked frozen pasta here, just like you would find at Costco, right? Same thing. You open a little sauce packet, you pour it all in. Moms love that. I love that when I'm in the middle of season and I've just got done working 16 hours. Okay. Batching your products, figuring out what days you can get away with doing what things without sacrificing quality or making sure that you, you're not going to, you know, get anybody sick. I can walk you through that. That is how we got through catering every single Every single season, this day was all of these. This day's was all of these. This day's was all of these. Next, then we would start it all over again. Dressings, sauces, dips, proteins. Things that were going to be, you know, that needed to be cut day of. You know, your cherry tomatoes, your, 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 your this or your that, okay? Carrots, can you do it the day before? Yeah, of course you can do it the day before. Can you make all of your salsas? Yeah, you can make your salsas. Guacamole needs to be day off, but can you prep some of the stuff the day before? Thinking about batching it, right? So that every single day you're being as efficient with your time as possible. So that and then so that you're not doing the same things over and over and over again. It used to, you know, crack me up. I remember um, being in many restaurants where I'm like, you guys literally make salsa every day. But you're not, it's not like because they go through eight gallons of it, they're going through like this much. Why, why would you make this much of salsa? Right? Or this much dressing, little eight ounces of this dressing. It's, it's vinegar dressing, right? So just kind of thinking like that. And again, let us know if that's something that you need help with. That's my jam. I love it so much. I can't even say it. I literally love I love being able to take huge amounts of orders and, and figure out how we can get it all done efficiently. And, and, and uh, it literally gets me excited. Okay. Cause I'm a, I'm a dork like that, but you know, going through, I know we are running out of time. I told you there's a lot I wanted to talk about today. Um, pulling things out that have excessive ingredients. You know, I think a lot of us have a tendency of going, okay. And, 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 and this, right. And pretty soon the salad has 15 different toppings or the burger it has like seven different things on it. It has sun-dried tomatoes and fresh tomatoes, things like that. Going through and pulling out excessive ingredients that you don't necessarily need because it's not helping with layering your flavors. It's just making it confusing and adding more steps, which takes me to my next step. <laughs> Makes me, takes me to my next step, steps. Anything you can do to eliminate steps that's what you should be thinking so even going back to right your your assembly line of things okay you don't want to have your lettuce here your lettuce here and your lettuce here okay we're gonna have our lettuce here right we're gonna first topping second topping third topping fourth topping according to what you want to be on top right you know, you want to make sure you have pops of color on top or whites standing out like feta cheese goat cheese things like that right on the top Okay, eliminating as many steps, eliminating as many times as that you, you have to walk to go get something. Grabbing all of the things that you need so that you can get it done as fast as possible. I, I've been on so many lines where I was like, why do I have to walk all the way over here to get the bread to make this sandwich? The, the, the sandwich needs to be right here. 
oh, but we have, you know, I have to get this from the cold prep line. I have to get this from the hot prep line. And then I have to bring it over here to the sandwich prep line. Eliminating steps. Okay, that's part of the execution of everything. Count how many steps it takes. We used to do this all the time in the middle of the summer, right? We would be creating new menu items, right? And then we would put ourselves on the line, I would say. All right, let's assume this is a plated meal, okay? How many, how many chefs is it going to take to execute a plated meal for 120 people, right? So we would have chicken. We would have, you know, three toppings. We would have sauce, veggies, potatoes, um, whatever else we decided to put on there. Could three chefs get away with plating that for 120 people in 15 minutes? Because if not, we needed to eliminate something. Sauce, garnish, wipe. I mean, there's all of these steps to it. It always goes back to steps. How many steps can I eliminate? Okay. Batching, 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 going through anything we can do um, it, all at once. That's going to be super, super helpful. Okay. I want to make sure. Oh, I have so much to do. Okay, we talked about the benefits of catering to your customers, all the, all the things that I, I think are going to help you now, going to help you in the future, and going to really bring that cash flow in and, 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 and keep that bottom line up high, okay? You can order down to the ounce what you need. There's never any guessing. You're not sitting here wondering, okay, it's five o'clock. Maybe we'll get a rush. Maybe we won't get anybody that orders from us today. You know exactly who's ordering what, when, and why. How can you be in every aspect of every meal? How can you be the one-stop shop? Now, I want to say this to you right now, too, okay? If you have all of these ideas, but you really don't know how to execute them safely, like, you know, you're thinking, I can sell, you know, ground beef, or I can sell ground turkey. I've seen a couple restaurants doing that right now. First thing that goes through my head, raw ground beef, raw ground turkey, how's it going to get to my doorstep, and how cold is it going to be when it gets here? Okay? If you don't know how to do it safely, don't do it. Stay in your lane until you're comfortable. Okay? My business coach used to tell me this all the time. She would say, stay in your lane, Rebecca. Stay in your lane. Until you get comfortable with it, don't do it. Stay in your lane. And I would be like, okay, fine. I just had all these ideas. Okay? But here's some things that I want to throw out there to you guys about, you know, ways that you can make sure foods are staying, um, you know, cold if you are dropping off, like, subscription-type meals. Okay? Renting reefers. Okay, if you don't have a ton of space, you don't have freezer space, rent a reefer van. Make sure you can get down to a freezer temp. You can then use it to deliver all of your meals. You can say, hey guys, just let you know this area of town, we're going to be delivering all of your meals on Mondays, okay, between 12 and 2. Um, Tuesdays, it's this area between 12 and 2. Wednesdays, it's this area. Nobody knows what day it is anyway. They're like, great, sounds good. Okay, so renting um, refrigerated trucks and things like that, that's always an option. Um, and I just wanted to mention that because we used to do it all the time. You know, business, even though we had like five walk-ins in a huge freezer, business was still too busy to fit it all in there. We would have to rent, you know, reefers. And what, what was great about it is that then we can deliver all the food to our event right on that reefer. And I didn't have to send anything on ice. I didn't have to worry if I had coolers or not. Things that, you know, as a, like a restaurant or somebody who hasn't done catering um, style service yet, this is going to be a, a way for you to do it safely in case you don't have coolers, you don't have Cambros and things like that. Okay. So we got that. Okay. Now, how can you maintain your reputation during this time? I'm going to go back to one thing, your team, okay? Making sure you're surrounding yourself by teams that can execute your vision. Teams that understand how important this business is. Teams that, that get this with every ounce of their being. Teams that feel it in their heart, okay? Make sure they share your vision. That's how you're going to make sure that your reputation 
stays where it is, and then continues to do this. Sorry. <laughs> Does that make sense to everyone? Everybody getting it? Okay. All right. Now it's on to the winners from yesterday's giveaway. Okay. Yesterday's winner is Mandy Scott. She was a rock star and invited a ton of people into this group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mandy. I hope you're here right now with us. Okay. If not, um, I'm going to be reaching out to you. Um, so that we can chat about who you want me to donate that $100, um, what nonprofit you want me to donate it to, um, so that we can get that going. Okay, so thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, now, same thing, guys. Today or tomorrow, we will announce today's winner. Okay, what we're going to be doing for you guys is my marketing team will get together um, with me and, and you, and we're going to design a graphic for a Facebook ad. OK, we're going to donate fifty dollars towards that Facebook ad. OK, this is huge. This is so great. OK, designing graphics is it's not it's not an easy feat. If you take a look at mine. Oh, my gosh, she does an amazing job. OK, so this is going to be really fun. But the same thing, we got to invite as many people that need to be here. OK, it has to be people that, that need to be here, too. OK, I, I my, my goal is to help this community uh, and, and, and be, be a place that we can offer support to one another. That's going to this is so important to me. That's why I want you to invite everybody in. Anybody who who you feel like could just really benefit from this, invite them in. OK, and once again, guys, email me if, if you have questions. Info at taking the wheel consulting dot com. OK, we have teams for everything. I have operational teams. I have culinary teams. I have marketing teams. I have all of it for a reason, because I want to be that one stop shop, too, just like you. I want to I surround myself by experts. So that we can offer solutions for everything. OK, I hope I answered everybody's questions today. I hope that this was informative and helpful. Please let me know in Leadership Revolution if there's anything that you guys want me to cover tomorrow that I missed or, you know, if there's anything that I, I went through too fast, let me know. I'd be happy to go through it again. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope to see you guys all tomorrow. Cheers.